Battletoads and Double Dragon, the ultimate team, is the exciting mashup of two of the most challenging franchises on the NES. While the game features enemies and playable characters from both franchises, this is a Battletoads game through and through. The Lee brothers are just along for the ride. It wouldn't feel wrong to just call this game Battletoads 2. The story picks up shortly after the events of the first Battletoads game. Using her gargantuan rat ship, the Dark Queen literally blows up the moon. When I was a boy, blowing up the moon was just a beautiful dream. Now, it's science fact. It's clear that the Queen is looking for a rematch, but this time she's joined forces with the Shadow Boss from Double Dragon. To even the odds, the Battletoads team up with the Lee brothers, Bimmy and Jimmy. Together, they become the ultimate team. Battletoads and Double Dragon was developed by Rare, the creators of the original Battletoads, as well as other brutally difficult games like Cobra Triangle, Snake Rattle and Roll, and Iron Sword, Wizards and Warriors 2. Many members of the original team returned, including programmer Mark Betteridge and composer David Wise. Technos, the makers of Double Dragon, didn't seem to have much involvement at all beyond providing the license. Battletoads and Double Dragon is not as difficult as the original Battletoads, but it would have been insane to even try to make a game more challenging than that one. That doesn't mean that this game is easy. If the original Battletoads is a 10 out of 10 difficulty, then Battletoads and Double Dragon is a solid 9. The difference is that this game is slightly more fair. If you lose a life, you never get sent back to a checkpoint. You just respawn right where you left off. It may not sound like much, but that small change makes all the difference in the world. Even better, the developers fixed the biggest flaw of the original Battletoads, the two-player mode. The two-player mode in the original Battletoads actually made the game more frustrating, and some of the levels just didn't work. In Battletoads and Double Dragon, you can choose two-player mode B to turn off friendly fire, which makes playing with a friend a lot more fun. You'll still have to start a stage over if either player needs to continue, though. The game was well received when it debuted in June of 1993. Nintendo Power Magazine chose it as the number two NES game of the year. Still, being 1993, many players had moved on to 16-bit systems, so it didn't sell a ton of copies. Rare was prepared for this. In December of 1993, they released a version of the game with 16-bit graphics for both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. Of the two, the Super Nintendo has nicer looking graphics, but I feel like the game plays better on Sega, making it my preferred 16-bit version. They also released a monochromatic portable version for the Game Boy. Out of all the different versions, I prefer the NES original. It's clear that the developers knew how to push the console to its limits, creating effects that are extremely impressive for an 8-bit system with gameplay that feels lightning fast. In modern times, both players and critics alike appreciate this game for being an impressive follow-up to the legendary Battletoads. When IGN released their list of the top 100 NES games of all time, they ranked Battletoads and Double Dragon at number 76. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges the NES is notorious for. There's not really a turbo tunnel this time, but there is a challenging shooter level where you'll have to fight the Dark Queen's rat ship in space. The enemies are vicious, and many of the hazards can lead to instant death. The bosses are ruthless and require lightning fast reflexes. They give you three continues, but it won't take much before it's game over.
But what if I told you about secret techniques that can make some of the most difficult fights seem easy? What if I told you where to find tons of bonus items and extra lives so you'll have a chance at survival? And what if I told you how to defeat every boss? Even the Dark Queen herself? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. Alright, Battle Toads and Double Dragon. Before we get started, if you're having trouble with this game, there are multiple cheat codes that you can try and they're all activated from the player select menu. The first one's called the Super Warp. You press B A down, B up down, and you'll hear a tone if you do it correctly. This Super Warp Zone can take you as far as level 5-2, but that's not the final stage of the game. It is nice that it'll give you 5 lives instead of the normal 3 that you start with. However, there's a better cheat code than that and it's easier to remember. It's down, up, up, down, A, B, B, A. It'll make that noise if you enter it correctly. Then you'll choose your character, and this time you can choose any of the levels, including 6-1 or 7-1, and you'll get 10 lives instead of 5. So pretty good, but the problem with either of those warp codes is if you beat the game, you'll get this ending where the queen admonishes you for using a cheat code, and then you'll be kicked right back to the beginning of the game. One code that is safe to use Hold up A and B as you choose your character or when you continue and you'll get five lives instead of the normal three. Well, we won't really need any codes to beat this game, so let's get started. But which character should we pick? I'm going to choose Billy and here's why. Whenever you jump and attack as a battle toad, you'll do a lame punch, but if you do the same thing as a double dragon, you'll do an awesome jump kick. So that's why I like choosing a double dragon. And between Billy and Jimmy, Billy jumps much higher than Jimmy. So you may think that all the battle toads and all the double dragons are the same. They are not. Each one is different. And of the five choices, I believe that Billy is the best. As we get started, make sure that you break those pods whenever you see them. Even if they just contain points, for every 100,000 points that you score, you'll get an extra life. So all the items are important. That red tablet will make you temporarily invincible, which will be useful whenever you're fighting that retro blaster enemy. By the time the two retro blasters come out though, the invincibility will have worn off, so make sure they're both on the same side before you attack one of them so that you don't get hit by the other's lasers. You can come down on the sides to attack these enemies. Most of the time I would recommend just pressing down whenever you're near enemies that are on the sides of the ship, but those guys will overwhelm you quickly if you don't attack them from the sides. If they do jump up onto the main area of the ship, do not remain on the edge. They can knock you off and that would be instant death. After you clear that orange retro blaster, this mechno mid appears. You want to start at the top and just start moving downwards. Once the mechno mid attacks, you want to get close to it and press the attack button. That will make you do an elbow drop on it, and you'll need to do two of those elbow drops to kill it. After you defeat the mechno mid, make sure that you grab that pod up above. It contains an extra life. When you're fighting these Retro Blasters, look at their shadows and try to line up with the shadow for the Retro Blaster that you want to attack. Press the attack button which will make your character grab them. 
and then just keep mashing the button until they explode. Here we have to fight two Mechnomits, and this is stage 1-2, so if you did have to use a continue, you would come back at this point in the game, but hopefully you won't have to use a continue this early. After you kill that first one, you need to kill a second hand. So here it is, it's going to pop out at the bottom. Start here, and you want to move in this pattern, so keep moving to the right, and you'll make this counterclockwise circle, but it's more like a rectangle. That's the easiest way to avoid those guys. Once you defeat two of them, we'll fight the boss. This is a Bobo. This guy should probably be called Punching Bag, because if you just line up with the lower corner of the hallway that he comes out of, and then start punching him so that just the edge of your fist hits his stomach, you'll slowly edge towards him, but don't ever turn back to the left. Just keep mashing the button and he'll get stuck in the same spot, and eventually, you will launch him into space. See you later, Abobo. Now that Abobo is defeated, we'll be heading on to level 2. But one thing I do want to mention is if you have access to a turbo controller, a turbo controller can make this game way easier. That thing that we just did on Abobo, it's so much easier if you can just hold the button down. And here I am mashing as fast as possible, but if you had a turbo controller, fighting these guys would be a joke. You can just kind of move towards them and just hold down the turbo attack button and you'll easily defeat them. So while I'm not going to be using a turbo controller since I know not everybody has one, if you do, that will really help out in this game. In this stage, you can climb up on the fences if you want to, but usually it's easy enough to just jump and kick the pods in midair if you want to collect them. So don't waste your time climbing on the fences. Whenever you kill this walker, it will drop a leg. You can repeatedly punch it, or if you do a running attack, now to run, you double tap a single direction, so you tap like right right or left left, and two running attacks will take out that walker. Once you have this pull weapon, these enemies are very easy to defeat. You just keep attacking them until you pull slam them into the ground. So here we go, and right down into the ground. If you're playing as a battle toad, you'll have a different animation for that. And here we face a mini boss. This is the Doorman of Doom. Only pick up dynamite that lands close to you so you don't get hit by an explosion. Once you've picked it up, it will not blow up on you so you have all the time you need to get very close to the door before you throw it, and it will take three hits to finish off that mini boss. Once he's defeated, you'll go inside the door that he was guarding, and when you get down here, you want to immediately take out the pod on the right side. That one contains a 1-up, and if you're not careful, you might walk it off the screen. Other than the fact that we're heading left instead of right this time, Stage 2-2 is not all that different from Stage 2-1. So get near these enemies, rapidly punch them, and you'll get them in a grab, which will finish them off. You can cling to the bottom of this stage, but I don't recommend doing that because it'll put you in a dangerous position. Over here, you want to walk past the elevator on the left and then head back over to the right because the walker on the right is the one that's going to pop out first, and you want to be on the right side of the elevators whenever they come out. Once you defeat that walker, you'll be able to grab the pole that it drops, and we'll be able to use that as a weapon. Don't forget to destroy the other walker leg, that's worth a good bit of points, and whenever you need it, that pod above us contains an item that can restore our health to full. So until we've taken some damage, we won't need to hit it, but if you are low on health, make sure to grab that right away. That pod there is another one of those items, so if you need health, make sure to grab it, but you'll want to save that until the last moment. So wait until you're down to like three or fewer boxes of health before you hit it. The enemies will come at you fast here, but that walker leg will make them very easy to defeat. It'll almost be like you're magnetized to the enemies. So quickly take them out and rack up a bunch of points, and then finish off this walker. 
He'll have another leg for you to destroy, so we can get 2,000 points that way. And if you took any damage, make sure to collect that item. The pod here will give you an invincibility pill. So as you fight this doorman, you will at least be able to be invincible for the first stick of dynamite that you throw. Otherwise, remember, just try to grab sticks of dynamite that land near to you. And once you've picked one up, it will not explode in your hand. So the only thing that can happen to you once you picked up a stick of dynamite is you get hit by one of the ones that's lying on the ground. So you don't want to wait forever, but you need to be pretty close to the door when you throw the sticks of dynamite this time. So make sure you're right near the side of the door when you toss them. You don't want to waste any sticks of dynamite on that doorman. Oh no, speeder bikes! I said there was no turbo tunnel this time, and that was not a lie. There's nothing turbo about this tunnel. It's quite slow. And if you can collect all the pods at the beginning, you'll get a 1-up. So try to do that as you get started. Stay on the top or the bottom and jump over the tall blue posts that come your way. You can weave between them, and there's actually a spot where you can just sit there and go right between them, but it's tricky to find that spot, so I recommend just sticking to the top or bottom and jumping over. When you get to this section with the riders, we just need to kill time for a while until we get to the next set of obstacles, but these guys are very dangerous. The ones that come from behind are the most dangerous. You want to walk them all the way over to the right side of the screen, do a big jump over to the left so that you land right on top of them, and then rapidly mash the attack button. The ones that come from the right side are easier to deal with, just move your bike on top of them, and just mash the attack button until they go down. This is another spot where having a turbo controller would really help. If you get caught in an attack by these riders, you could get knocked off of your bike, and that would be instant death. After you get past enough of them, there will be some pods. You won't be able to get a 1-up this time, but make sure to grab the points. The points could eventually turn into a 1-up, so it is useful. Then there's some more tall blue poles to jump over. Try to avoid them. They're pretty easy to avoid. And then the brown poles. Just jump over them as well. And then we're going to be flung off of the bike because it's time to fight the boss, Big Blag. Run at Blag to pick him up, and once he's in your hands, take him down to this spot, toss him in the air, and then quickly double tap right, then press B, and then press right again and hold it, and you'll do a devastating knee slam that will kill him in a single hit. Now, if you're having trouble with doing that trick and you can't seem to execute it, just doing these flying kicks is a very good way to deal with Big Blag, so here's an alternate strategy that you can use. To do the flying kicks, you're going to double tap a direction so that you start running, and then hit your attack button to execute the flying kick. You need to get good at this flying kick move. The faster you can execute that move, the easier it will be later in the game when you'll need to do a lot of flying kicks to be able to beat the boss. So it's not a bad time to practice it. Either way that you defeat Big Blag is good, and once he's defeated, we'll be on to level 3. Big Blag was from the Battletoads franchise, and the next boss, Roper, is definitely from the Double Dragon universe, although he seems more like Machine Gun Willy than Roper to me. In any case, this next one, level 3, is the largest stage in the game, and it also has a new perspective. So use your flying kicks to take out those Lindas, hit this pod if you need some health, and then quickly run to get under that crusher. When you see guns like this, you want to wait until they stop shooting, get underneath, jump up and press the attack button to grab on, and then hit it a few more times to finish it off. Don't jump into this gap until you've attached your rope, and then if you hold to either the left or the right, you'll start flashing and you'll be able to use your whirlwind attack, which is sort of like the anvil attack that the Battletoads can do. At the bottom there's another gun, and you can theoretically juggle this gun forever if you're good, but you'll never get a 1-up from doing it, at least not until you hit 100,000 points. Down here we'll face some more Linda enemies. The Lindas can attack you very quickly, so the best way to deal with them is to double tap a direction so that you start a little run, and then attack to do a flying kick. 
If you can catch them as soon as they pop out of the door, you can grab them and hit them with a normal punching combo, but otherwise the flying kicks are the way to go. Make sure to attach a rope and swing across that gap, and then over here you can grab some invincibility before you fight these guns. After you defeat the second gun, head over here to the right where you'll fight two guns at one time. You want to make sure that you head all the way to the right before those guns show up so that you'll stay out of their crossfire and you can take out the gun on the right and then head back over and take out the one on the left. Over here we can get some more health and then we'll fight some Lindas. They don't even pop out of doors this time so make sure to just use flying kicks. You'll want to run to get underneath these crushers and then make sure that you attach your rope. Over here you want to quickly tornado over to the right side. Then you'll be over here on the right and those buzz saws won't be able to get you. You'll see two pods that you won't be able to collect if you're over here on the right side, but those just contain invincibility pills and you won't need them if you're over here on the right. You won't be able to get hit by any buzz saws anyway. So that's the easy way to get to the bottom of that shaft. And when you come over here, make sure to start a run to get under that crusher and then grab onto this post that runs along the ceiling and climb all the way over to the right where you'll be able to hit that switch and make your way into level 3-2. Make sure to grab all these pods. One of them contains a 1-up. A swarm of Lindas emerges from these doors, so keep giving them flying kicks. You don't want to get too close to them because they'll hit you with their whips and after a while they'll stop coming out of the doors and they'll start coming in from the sides as well. So you need to watch the doors and the sides for Lindas. Just keep giving them flying kicks and this last Linda won't come out until you go all the way to the right. You can try to jump over her but she may catch you with a whip attack. The easiest way to fight her is to just keep giving her flying kicks to the left until she stops moving forward. Over here you'll need to latch on with your rope. You can change the length of the rope, but it's easy enough to just keep it the default length and just jump off when you get to the right side. This pod will refill your health and you'll need to run to get underneath these crushers. Run whenever they retract upwards. In this narrow corridor, we'll fight even more Lindas, but the same techniques that we've been using before will still work. I still recommend using the flying kicks, although if you can catch one in a combo, then make sure to finish her off before you move forward. Over here, these yellow crushers are tough. You'll want to use your run to get underneath them. Watch out for the blue one at the end, and then climb onto this fence. You'll be able to grab an item down here to refill your health, and just wait patiently until that electricity is moved below you before you climb past it. If you hold to the left and get really close to these guns whenever you use your tornado attack, you can hit them multiple times and each hit is worth 2,000 points, so you can very quickly rack up some points there. You can use a similar strategy against the crows over here, but you'll only be able to connect to each crow three times with a whirlwind attack, but you'll be able to juggle them a lot more times than that if you just hit them with your kicks. Any bird that's been hit by a whirlwind attack, you will not be able to get up higher than maybe 2,000 points. If you don't hit them with a whirlwind, it's possible to juggle them until you get a 1-up. It seems like it's a bit harder in this game than it was in the original though, probably because we don't have any weapons to use. Down here, keep using your whirlwind attack. That should keep you safe against the flocks of crows, or I suppose that they're a murder of crows. And down at the bottom, you'll see one more blue gun, and that signifies that you reached the bottom. Get underneath these crushers. Be careful of that second one. And here you need to climb up on another pipe. As you climb across the ceiling, press up to move your legs up in the air. That'll help you avoid these first few electrical hazards. These ones that pop out from below, wait until two come out in rapid succession and then move to the right. And when you see them in a wave pattern, the easiest way to deal with those is to move towards the waving electricity so that it'll move past you. And once it's past you, it's no longer a threat. These birds can be avoided by just pressing up, 
So when you see a bird, press up. Don't try to attack it, you'll die. And over here, more electricity coming from below. Wait for two to come out in rapid succession, then move forward. And that's going to bring us to the switch, but wait just one second for the electricity to go out of the way, and then head over to the right to flip the switch, bringing us to level 3-3. It takes a minute for your rope to connect there, so don't jump into the hole. Wait until your rope connects, and then stay on one side so you can engage your whirlwind attack. Once again, you can try to juggle these enemies for increasing point values, but don't let it get in the way of avoiding the electricity. That can do you some serious damage. Once you get to the bottom, you'll drop off your rope and you want to head to the right. Over here, you can quickly get through those first two electricities and then wait for a second before you go through the third. Over here, you can grab a pod with an invincibility item, and that will allow you to quickly get to the end of that narrow tunnel. Over here, we'll be able to latch on, and here's a new type of rope challenge. Stay on the left side and press up and down to weave around the electricity, and then make sure to hit all three of those crows before they start flying at you, or they will be difficult to deal with. Over here, a bunch of garbage drops on your head, and it falls in a random pattern, making it very hard to avoid. Stay way at the bottom so you have the most amount of time to get around the garbage, but it's tough to get out of that spot without taking at least a couple hits. The good news is, there's a bunch of items down here, so you'll be fine as long as you can make it to the bottom. That sound means that we're about to fight the boss, but don't miss this pod that contains the 1-up before we get there. There's also another one with a bunch of points, so you'll probably want to grab it as well. And here is Roper. Roper starts up on that sign and then he drops down to the bottom. If you hold down, whenever you attack, you'll automatically do a jump kick. This is good because if Roper shoots at you while you're ducking, the bullets will go over your head. Let him come to you. You can see what'll happen if you get too aggressive with Roper. He'll start hitting you whenever you walk towards him. Instead, whenever he gets in range, let him have it with one of your jump kicks and just stay in that ducking position. That way you'll never get hit by his bullets and whenever he gets close, you'll be able to easily kick him with a jump kick. If he does do the machine gun attack, you will have time shortly after he stops shooting to do a quick flying kick at him, so that's a good way to get some extra damage in. But for the most part, if you're just patient against this boss, let him come to you and just stay in that crouching position. You should be able to avoid most of his attacks and have no problem defeating him. After the fight, we blast off in a small pod, and that's right. The next stage is the Space Shooter stage. This one's tough if you don't know what to do. I've said this about a million times at this point, but if you have a turbo controller, it makes night and day difference in stage four. So here at the very beginning, you see a nice homage to asteroids. Now I'm going to assume that you don't have a turbo controller for these strategies, if you do have one, that would change what you do here significantly, and we will go over that in a moment. Instead, you just want to try to shoot the asteroids as they come out of the ship's exhaust. They'll break into smaller parts. You can move around by pressing the A button, and try to mash the B button as quickly as you can to get a good stream of bullets coming out of the ship. Try not to get hit by the asteroids. They're not that hard to avoid just by staying in one spot and trying to shoot at them if they get close, but do move if you don't think you're going to be able to kill them before they hit you. At this point, it will start launching a bunch of mines from the back of the ship. You want to stay in about the middle of the right side of the screen and just rotate and keep trying to shoot at those mines. If you can clear them all, you'll be able to get a 1-up. These mines, you can get a 1-up by destroying them as well, but most of the time they don't hit the lower left corner, so if you hide out down here, you should be able to avoid most of them. At this point, it throws a round type of mine at you, and it will also launch two 1-ups during this phase, so you want to look for those and try to collect them when you can. 
If they go off on the right side, you will not be able to collect them. The next thing that it's going to do is launch a UFO. Now we can use our heat seeking missile. If you hold in the fire button, you don't want to highlight your own ship with that. You can shoot a missile that will kill you. Instead, you want to highlight the UFO and you need to keep that target on top of the UFO for a moment. And that means moving along with it. It can be tough to do this sometimes without getting hit because you won't be able to move your ship whenever you're moving that target. But if you can lock on for long enough, you'll be able to launch a missile and nine times out of 10, the missile will hit the UFO. Each UFO moves progressively faster and this blue one, I find very hard to lock on with the heat seeking missiles. So you may want to try mashing it with your regular gun. It's much easier, of course, with the turbo controller. Once that blue UFO is defeated, though, we'll be moving on to stage 4-2. And in stage 4-2, we have to fight the ship itself. Suddenly, we're locked in this position where we're facing the upper left corner. And if you stay down here in the lower left, most of the ship's attacks won't be able to hit you. There's two vulnerable points on the ship right now. Those are the points where it's shooting from. So you can use your heat seeking missiles to launch missiles from this safe position. And you just need to put three missiles into each side to be able to open up the next part of the ship. Now for this part, I don't recommend the missiles. Carefully move back and forth to avoid the electricity that it shoots. And whenever it stops shooting the electricity for a moment, use that opportunity to shoot right on the nose of the ship. Otherwise, mash as fast as you can as you move left and right. For this one, if you get right up here, you should be able to launch a missile that'll hit it. Sometimes that missile will miss though, so I'll try launching a couple missiles. If the first missile goes in there and actually hits, the second one sometimes will hit the ship anyway. Now we can stay in the lower left corner and take out these green ball launchers using the same strategy that we used at the very beginning. So just keep launching your missiles. At this point, we should use our gun again. Try to damage the left and the right side evenly. The reason why you're trying to damage both sides evenly is because once you completely destroy one of the sides, the other side will start shooting more rapidly. So ideally what you'd want to do is destroy one side and then destroy the other one immediately thereafter. And you'll see that's what we do here. That brings us to this phase and this is the most dangerous one. You need to keep moving to avoid the gun and you need to shoot it in the very small hitbox that's where the bullets are coming from. So that's where you're trying to hit it. Keep moving, and then when you get to this phase, it'll launch missiles at you. The missiles are not that hard to avoid. Whenever they're flashing, you'll be able to shoot them, but just keep shooting the front of the ship and it will turn into a large missile, signifying that it's been defeated. Let's take a look at what you can do if you have a turbo controller. You can see how much faster you can shoot with a turbo controller. I'm a fairly fast button masher, but there's no way I can button mash this quickly. Now watch how fast we can defeat the ship itself. You can get pretty reckless with the turbo controller. It may actually be better to use some of the heat seeking missile strategies and kind of mix the two strategies together. But you can see that with the turbo controller, this doesn't take long at all. We can just get right near the vulnerable points and just start hosing them down with bullets and it seems like it disrupts a lot of the ship's attacks. We will try to want to evenly damage the left and the right side though because you will endure more intense attacks whenever you completely destroy one side in any phase. This is especially helpful when you're fighting these parts that you normally would have to use the gun for when you're using the heat seeking missile strategy like this part here where you have to dodge the gunshots. But that's why I recommend using a turbo controller. It makes this game a whole heck of a lot easier. I used to think that fighting that rat ship was very difficult, but once you know about the heat seeking missiles, it's not really that bad. Now I wish I could tell you that it was going to get easier from here, but that would be a lie. 
Stage 5 is called Missile Mayhem and it uses that same two-dimensional perspective that we saw in level 3. There's no ropes this time, but whenever you see these ninjas that pop out and throw shurikens at you, you want to duck and wait until they get close to you. Remember that when you're ducking in these two-dimensional stages and you press the attack button, you'll automatically do a jump kick. Definitely watch out for the fire that comes out of those rocket thrusters. That can deal serious damage to you and in some cases could be instant death. So just patiently wait for the rocket to fire and then jump over. And down here we'll have to deal with some scuzz rats. They'll pop out from the doors and from up above. You can either use your flying kicks or if you can catch them in a combo you may be able to hit them several times and then knock them off. Another one of those ninjas pops out here. You know what to do. Duck down and then jump kick him when he gets close. There's a pod that'll refill your health before you climb down the stairs. And down here, we'll want to do some more flying kicks to take out these scuzz rats. If you can knock them off the edge, that kills them instantaneously. And then you'll need to go inside this door where we'll fight General Slaughter. Against General Slaughter, I like to use a lot of flying kicks, just like you would against many of the bosses, and just keep moving up and down, then try to get him with a flying kick when he moves up to you. If you can get him in a corner, you can rapidly hit him with some flying kicks, and you want to make sure to collect the item to refill your health before you deal the final blow to General Slaughter, otherwise you may not have time to collect it as the room fades to black. Down here we have to watch out for this flame, wait for the first one to go, then wait for the second one and then quickly go to the top. Up here wait for the middle fire to go and then quickly climb to the bottom. When you get to the top of this ladder you'll be attacked by a couple more ninjas, take them out, but after they're defeated you'll face the Window Man of Doom. You need to grab the dynamite, grab the ones that get close to you. Once you've picked up the dynamite it won't explode in your hands and you need to take out all three windows. To get the left and the right window, stand on top of the center window and to hit the center one, stand above the left or right window and throw to the middle. Once the window man is defeated, watch out for the thrusters that will start firing and make your way over to the ladder where once again we'll have to fight General Slaughter. He's a little bit more difficult this time and you want to make sure that you get the pod in the room before you finish him off because this time it contains a 1-up. Once you get over here on the right side you won't be able to go back to the left. Just like the previous time when we fought General Slaughter, you want to double tap a direction and then press the attack button to do your flying kicks. If you move up and down on the screen the general will have to move up to you or you'll be able to attack the general when he's not exactly on your line which will also give you an advantage. Either way, you're mostly going to be doing flying kicks. Jumping kicks are also pretty decent and if you can get close enough a nice little combo that ends in an uppercut is not the worst. But mostly flying kicks whenever you're fighting that guy. Once again you need to avoid some thrusters, climb some ladders and make your way over to the right. There's some ninjas that attack here. We know what to do. You want to duck and jump kick them when they get close. You can actually grab that fin and climb across it, but there's no real advantage to doing that here. So just use the ducking strategy when fighting these ninjas. We'll find a pod to refill our health, take out one more ninja, and that'll bring us to level 5-2. This is a checkpoint, so if you were to lose all your lives and have to use a continue, you will come back to level 5-2 and you wouldn't have to do the beginning of the missile again. So take some comfort in that and stay down here at the bottom to take out some scuzz rats, but be ready to duck to take out another ninja that will emerge from the window. A few more scuzz rats will attack you here. You want to get on the far right side so that you don't get overwhelmed by them. You may need to use some combos or just keep trying to use your flying kicks. Those are a safe way to fight them, but watch out for the ninja that pops out of the window. You'll want to be ducking whenever he throws his ninja star. Catch another ninja with a flying kick and then we can deal with some more scuzz rats. You'll be caught between them here, so make sure that you're fast with your flying kicks to take them out. 
and then we'll be dealing with the Window Man of Doom again. This one's really fast, so grab the dynamite whenever you can, and you want to stand in front of those doors to be able to throw into the windows. Those are good positions to throw from. If you had a dynamite from before, you'll still be holding it now, and you can still do flying kicks against these scuzz rats. But we will have to fight one more Window Man of Doom, stand in front of that moving red area to throw into the window, and make sure to collect this item before you go into the door or you won't be able to get it. This will be the third and last time that we fight General Slaughter, but he is very fast this time. There's an item in this room that can restore your health. You may just want to try to open the pod preemptively and leave the item there so that you can collect it if you need it. Otherwise, try to work the boss into a corner. Use your flying kicks, but he's so fast this time that sometimes the best strategy is to just try to get on top of him and mash the attack button as fast as you can. If you do get hit by the general when he starts pummeling you, rapidly attack him back. You may be able to disrupt his attack, and then it'll be you that is pummeling him. If you need to collect that item to restore your health, grab it. But after a while, you'll send General Slaughter flying, and then we'll be on to the final part of the missile. At the top of the ladder, we'll fight a couple more of those ninjas, and then the door will open below. But it won't lead to General Slaughter this time. When we go inside, we're just going to fight a few of those scuzz rats, and if you get one in a combo, you may pick it up. Just press the attack button one more time to toss him out the window. You'll want to attack very rapidly in here. Your flying kicks won't be as effective, so just get close to these enemies, rapidly mash your attack buttons, and they should go down fairly easily. As usual, Turbo Controller will make this easier, but you should probably know that by now. Once they're all defeated, this door will open, but don't move too quickly. You don't want to get hit by those flame thrusters. Wait until that first one goes, and then make your way up here to the right, where we'll face the boss, Robo Manus. You won't be surprised to hear me say that you should use flying kicks against this boss, but this time you need to execute them as quickly as possible. When you notice his neck is rapidly flashing, you want to try to pop him up in the air and juggle him. The easiest way to do that is to get him on the right side, pop him up while Billy Lee is in the middle of the screen, and if you're holding down, you'll do automatic jump kicks. So you can get him in this spot right here, and then just hold down and keep attacking, and he'll stay up in the air, take multiple hits, and that'll be the best way to finish him off. If you're not good at juggling Robo Manus or doing those flying kicks, you're likely to use a lot of lives against that guy, and you're going to need those lives moving forward, because the next two levels feature very difficult bosses. And that brings us to Stage 6, the Shadow Boss Showdown. If you try using your flying kicks against the enemies here, you'll be trying it all day. Instead, you need to get them in your punch combos, so whenever they get close, rapidly mash the attack button. I'm only gonna say it once, a turbo controller would help. In this stage, you'll see these lighting fixtures hanging from the ceiling. If you jump up and grab one and then hit it four times, the light part will drop off, and when you do an elbow drop on it, you'll be able to get some items. So instead of having those pods that you saw in the other stages, we just have the light fixtures in this stage instead. After you defeat these walkers, make sure that you pick up one of the legs. We're about to get swarmed by enemies up ahead, but if we have a walker leg, it's going to make it a whole lot easier. And here are the enemies. There could be up to three on the screen at once, so try to pummel them into the ground as quickly as possible. Just knocking them over doesn't really help. So pop, 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 and then pound, 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 right into the ground. You can grab this light fixture, but don't grab the next one. It's better if you leave it hanging for when we fight the boss. So just keep pounding these guys into the ground. These ones will go right into the ground, so you're almost magnetized to them. We had a similar encounter of enemies like this earlier in the game. And when we head over here to the right, this is the Shadow Boss. The Shadow Boss is very difficult. You want to try to use flying kicks and jump kicks. 
I like to do a pattern where I'm at the top of the screen, do a flying kick, then move down to the bottom of the screen and do a flying kick when he comes down there. Use that time to give yourself some space between you and the boss. You don't want to give him a chance to grab you. The challenge comes when he disappears because if he reappears too close to you, he's going to have a good chance to catch you in some kind of attack. And if you see him shake and make this noise, you want to jump up onto one of the light fixtures to avoid him. So that's the best thing to do whenever he does that. If he does a single charge move, it's possible to disrupt that with your flying kick. The left light fixture contains some health, and the right light fixture contains a 1-up, but make sure that you leave at least one of those hanging just in case you need to use it to save yourself from that bouncing shell attack. Speaking of the bouncing shell attack, here it is again. So we're just going to hang from the light fixture, then quickly drop down whenever he does it and try to attack him. If you get caught in one of his attacks, try to mash the attack buttons as quickly as you can. You may be able to break out of it and turn the tables on him, and suddenly you'll be the one punching him. It doesn't always work, especially if he grabs you by the neck. You are definitely going to take a bunch of damage if he does that. So watch out for that flying shell attack. I'm going to try to get the health out of the left light fixture. It's dangerous to do that. Make sure you have a good opening whenever you're collecting items. And whenever he's defeated, make sure to pick up the one up on the right side. And then the best way to get through this lightning, wait until the first one is up in the air and do a run and you'll just get past all three, no problem. There are some points in the light fixtures there but getting them is likely to get you killed, and it's just not worth it. With the Shadow Boss out of the way, all that's left is the Dark Queen. I hope you have a lot of lives, because it's time for Armageddon 2, The Rematch. Level 7-1 is actually short. Most of it is just the boss, the Dark Queen, but the enemies here are vicious. Keep doing flying kicks on the green spaceman enemies. If you get one knocked down, you can actually flying kick the body that's lying on the ground and you'll definitely want to do that. That's a good way to finish them off. Over here, there's a couple retro blasters. Line up with their shadow, grab and pummel them. And over here, you want to run to the right and do a flying kick. If you time it correctly, you can catch one of these enemies right as they appear on the screen. But remember, you need to hit these guys again when they're down. So if you see that guy laying down, do another flying kick or an elbow drop to finish him off. And after they're beaten, there's only one more enemy before the queen. It's a Mechno Mitt. Whenever this guy stops, if you do a run and then an attack, you'll hit him with a knee drop, and that will kill it in a single hit. All right. It's time for the Queen. The Dark Queen is extremely difficult, but if you have enough lives, you should be able to survive. As she emerges from the fire, keep hitting her with flying kicks, jump kicks, whatever you got. Flying kicks are generally the best. You should be able to hit her with multiple flying kicks, but if you're not as good at the flying kicks, try holding down so you do some of those automatic jump kicks. Those are also decent. You want to keep hitting her even as she goes back into the fire, and then you need to avoid the fire once she's fully inside of it. So try to stay on one side, and if the fire gets close to you, just jump straight up in the air. That's usually better than trying to jump over it. Capsules will pop out from the machine on the right side. It's possible to catch those in midair, and if you do that, they're easier to collect. But once they land on the ground, be careful collecting those, especially when the queen is out of the fire. If the queen's in the fire, that could be a good opportunity to collect a capsule. Sometimes they contain invincibility, sometimes they contain points, sometimes they contain health, and occasionally they could even contain a 1-up. If you do a flying kick when you're near a capsule, you'll do a devastating knee drop attack instead, which deals a lot of damage, but it'll make it hard to get multiple hits on the queen in that cycle. In any case, just keep up the flying kicks and eventually the queen will go down. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten Battletoads and Double Dragon. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Just like the original Battletoads, the ending is very short, but it doesn't change the feeling of achievement that you get for beating such a difficult game. 
as the game wraps up, I can't help but wish that there were more mashups like this. Other than maybe Kingdom Hearts, you just don't see two major franchises merging very often. What other mashups would you like to see? Let me know in the comments. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Battletoads and Double Dragon and put an end to the Dark Queen's evil schemes. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more evil organizations teaming up and that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.